I, I think uh, maybe what you're sort of angling here is when we had the chat last week, um, you said, what do you see as the most common uh, deficiency or area that the, that, that skiers around the world lack? Like, is it core strength? Is it mobility? Like, what is it? And I said, you know, thought about it and I went, you know what I have to keep always teaching or talking about or helping people become more aware of is their feet. And um, I, I mentioned like a lot of people think about the ankle joint in skiing and, and that's sort of as far as it really gets or discussed or maybe like, you know, stand on this part in your foot. But uh, I really think it's, it's more than that because of well a few things one the role of the feet for for balance and proprioceptive feedback like like the reason we can walk around and um you know look at our phone while we're walking down the street and not fall over is because there's all these automatic systems reflexes and things going on the vestibular system all these other things are working in the background uh to give you all this info and yeah, the, the feet are, are a huge one. And in, in skiing, if you can kind of like tune in to what's going on there, it can really be a great starting point. So as opposed to just like a lot of people get told to lean their shins on the front of the boot, um, which is not a bad thing, but then what are your feet also doing as your shins are, are touching the front of the boot? Because the sole of your feet is like a is like a connective sort of part to feeling the whole entire length of the ski. You don't really feel the length of the ski through your shin. Like you you, you just don't like your shins. You just feel this pressure there. But you don't really get a sense of like much of the the back or the or the or the ski from from the foot back when you're you're focused all the way there. And um, and skis are designed to work from tip to tail all the way along and if you're not sensitive to what's going on under your feet with the pressure you you could be skidding out without realizing that it's just a pressure along the length of the ski issue it's not an edging issue it's not a separation upper body down the hill issue anything like that it's just that you're not feeling what's going along the length of the ski so so one big thing is just first people paying attention to their feet i think is a really really huge important thing and that's and that's why i've teamed up and worked with carve because their their insole unit is a, is a pressure sensor that you're standing on so if you if you can look at the data it's telling you like where where things are going on under your foot and and can give you feedback on that how things are moving side to side in the foot um front to back uh combos of both in you know the x and y axis like both front to side forward back and side to side and so starting there is a really good, really good point. And once you realize what's going on in there, then taking some ownership and control over, you know, how you use that ankle and foot area. So it's not just say flexing back and forth in the boot, because if you take that at the purest sense of, if you're skiing along, say just straight along like a flat cat track kind of thing, cruising along when you move, your your ankle back and forth uh so so you're not really you, you're changing the pressure a little bit but the shin is moving back and forth so i don't know if it's going to be shown but you know, i'm doing it with my hand back and forth like an ankle joint that doesn't really do much to make the ski do anything right um yet if you held the ankle like rigid almost like how a ski boot is is sort of like a an l shape when you now move forward and back with it more rigid, pressure moves along the length of the ski way faster, way more directly without as much motion. And so I think people forget like when they're just flexing their ankle back and forth, there's a lot of movement going on in their body, but the translation to making the ski do something is kind of really delayed or, or lagged behind. And so having a connection of how your shin and foot, lower leg and foot interact and work together would be another element 
that I feel people lack um, awareness or training um, in, in their skiing. Um, and then finally, like, like when you, when you have a look at a foot and you realize there are like 26 bones in there and all these joints without any tension in it, it could, it could be likened to quite a, uh, like a weak structure, like more joints, more places for it to fail as opposed to, you know, the, like the, the knee joint is really kind of back and forth, pretty simple one, but the foot, it's all these other, pl all these places along there that, that it, you, you know, I'm using the word inverted commas fail, but you know, stretch or change shape or, or whatever. So you go to push through the foot and part of the energy gets lost into just the foot deforming. Um, and so not going through the ski. So, so another part is, how to work the arches of your foot, the different sort of um, arches so that you can use the foot changes function from something that is say a mobile adapting suspension device at times to a rigid lever. And the arches of the foot are the way to change that. So it can be like a stiff arch bridge shape, or it can be a suspension arched bridge shape and that's all got to do with how you put tension through your muscles and and tendons into the foot and you're you're in complete control of that yet i think a lot of people are very passive there i want to highlight one thing you said so that people can visualize it even more with what we call in the podiatry terms and i don't know if this carries over to ski terminology but the windless effect of the uh, of the plantar fascia so the, the fascia goes from the medial tubercle and lateral tubercle and then extends into the met heads. And it's one of the strongest uh, pieces of fascia in the body. It's almost like a ligament. What some people don't know is that the Achilles tendon, which comes in through the back, in through the back and it attaches at this uh, back middle area of the posterior part of the calcaneus, also has some fibers, gotta bring it back a little bit, there we go also has some fibers that cross over into the plantar fascia. So when you were talking about ankle uh, flexion and the dorsiflexion of the toes, I was thinking about, yeah, that sort of makes sense in terms of what I know about the anatomy of the, uh, the Achilles tendon and, and, and the fascia. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And it's um, like that, the, 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 the fascial system and all that sort of stuff is pretty incredible and has, a lot of properties that uh, can be utilized, like you can, can be stiff, but also uh, has some give in it. So you're, 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 you're maybe, you've got tension through your ankle and foot, but that tension has some give. So when you go over rough terrain or whatever, it sort of gives, but springs back to position. So your ski can kind of adapt over a bump, but then gets pushed back down to be in contact and continue working because at the end of the day, that's what you're, you're, you're riding skis. And so you have to make sure movements come back to making the skis work. And, um, and I think like I look, I look back early on when I was really learning a lot about the body and, uh, you know, sort of understanding more about biomechanics and I definitely got caught up in kind of not taking that step back into the skis and like you're doing all this because you want the ski to grip so it goes this way so it turns so you get control or you avoid this obstacle or whatever it is and so yeah the, the, there's got to be a point where you take all this understanding of the body back into how does that affect the ski working um, because I, I see that as a problem in in especially in instructor training or people that take a lot of lessons is they end up focused on movements and body positions that they don't relate back to how the ski performs on the snow. And so they go too much down a road of like, like the instructor maybe sees that you're rotated or your upper body is not facing where it should. And, um, or the, you know, your, your shins are not parallel. You've got an A-frame. And so they fix it by changing the shape of the body. But, I bet if the person was stood there, like one thing you would want to test is like, if you took all the ski equipment off and you said, can you make this position with your body? The person would probably have 
very little trouble with that to copy, you know, maybe a minute or two, copy this position. Oh yeah, no change this. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That position. And they go out and they try it and they can't copy it. And why can't they copy it? Because what's happening is one ski is, is doing one thing. It's slipping away. Another is not slipping. So now you've got, you're standing on one platform that is consistent like maybe your inside ski is gripping and going a certain direction your outside ski is not yet you're trying to stand in a certain position but it'd be like me jumping over like through the screen to you ben and getting you on a ski stance and i'm telling you to do something but i'm pulling on part of your heel one way it would really you would be struggling to stand up properly because there's another force going on that you can't deal with yet if you start from the platform and make sure the ski is planted gripped holding you can put your body in whatever position you want just like like i can right now i can stand up and and move myself into the shape i want very easily but on on snow and slippery surfaces the platform there's this there's this slipperiness that you need to make sure the ski is kind of working from first and i think some people uh, instructors with not enough knowledge tend to focus on seeing that position and just, just change your position instead of checking. Well, first of all, is what they're standing on going to allow them to do that? Like, do they understand how a ski grips? 